is Sam McKee's here. What's up, buddy? How are you, man? Hungover. Oh, really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Um, Hurting. I avoided it a little bit. I'm not too bad today. Dude, I'm I'm basically Biden. I get the cocktail <laughs> in the morning where it's like I take a, a, a caffeine gum, a coffee... <laughs> Neuro thing. <laughs> what MTC oil? What is that? Yeah, stuff? That, I, <laughs> I, they, they shot me up with the full brain cocktail to get going today. Uh, I'm on whatever they're gonna need to get whatever they trot Biden out there for like if, five minutes at a time. If I'm hungover now at this age, yeah, which you that's know, what they need. Happens once in a while. Yeah. I really just I have like a big Yeti water. Yeah. And I just hammer that thing full of water. Sure. And I just chug the entire thing, full thing of like a liter of water. Yeah. And then I have a coffee. And generally, I'm okay. Guess what? Yeah. Thanks for that. Yeah. This is the number one to take. Oh, you just don't drink water before no, bed. No, 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 yeah, no, no, no. I do want to get up. Yeah. Okay. I, oh, I don't ever get drink up. water before bed. Oh, really. I, I'll have a, maybe a Tylenol if it's really bad, but no, I'm, I'm okay. See, I don't really. I'm kind yeah, of a veteran now. Drug. That's the problem. Yeah, I'm kind of a veteran. <laughs> 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 we had a blast last night. Well, we went to Cafe Dip well. to watch the soccer game. Well, actually, yeah, no, we. It was fun at first. The idea of it was fantastic. The idea was great. The company was great. Yes. We were enjoying our time at first. Mm-hmm. First of all, let me say the staff at Cafe Dip, all time. Yeah. Like the the servers there, the patio is jam-packed. Mm-hmm. It's a zoo. You got a million people watching the soccer game who are highly invested in it, who also need constant refreshments, yes. especially on a hot day like yes. that yesterday. And stress drinking. Stress drinking, yeah. the the heat moving around, great job. That awesome, awesome setup. Thanks to everybody over there yeah. for like an awesome time. Rocco, the whole gang. Yeah. Incredible. There is nothing. I I watch all the sports. Mm-hmm. I watch everything. Mm. It breaks my heart that I have never been able to have passion for a club. Okay. Yeah. Because I, you can't fake it, right? You can't just find it. I, you know me, I kind of have a little dalliance with West Ham where okay, I, yeah. I like West Ham, yeah. but I'm not in love with West Ham. I don't live or die with them. I couldn't tell you one player on the team right now. Okay. Not one. Yes. Okay. I like the idea of being a West Ham fan. The hammers. That's great right. colors, great stuff. But they're, that's because cool I could never be a, a front runner. Uh, I could never just bandwagon it on one of the big teams. Yeah. They're, they're too big. The, the history is too rich. Yep. I also don't want to get up on Saturday morning. I never want the conflict of football with football. Football? Football? But when you're watching a high stakes, high event, big moment soccer mm-hmm. game, I don't know if there's anything that beats that rush. I said to you, it's like watching overtime hockey. But for 90 from minutes. The, the, the very <laughs> outset of it, it's just like, welcome, you're in overtime hockey now. Well, that's the thing, well, especially when you're playing a team like Argentina when you're Canada, oh. that the stakes are so high because you're going you're gonna to have three or four chances, tops, in 90 minutes. You're going to have a few good chances, and if you don't tuck, you're probably going to lose two or three nothing like what happened <sighs> last night. But yeah, I, even me who loves Chelsea, I love TFC, like I go to a lot of TFC games, I watch most Chelsea games, it's not... The that? same. Okay. There's nothing that's like, I even think any fan of a club team, like even if you're from uh, Madrid and you love Real Madrid or you, you know, you love uh, Atletico, you're a huge fan of one of those teams. Mm-hmm. When Spain's playing, I'm sure that like Real Madrid pales in comparison to how much you love uh, Spain or Spain's soccer team. I, I, that's True. how I think it would be. So I think at any level, yeah, international sports matters more it always will matter more it's about your country it's about you know pride civic pride having yeah, all your like friends when, together cheering when for Canada the same baseball thing. plays i'm not like well, yeah, oh my the, god i need this more than the anything WBC, it's like yeah. we have we had like ryan dempster pitching for yeah. us last year like we and you i know, cared and i cared I but i i it but it's was not it's same. nothing like that no, it's no, nothing but like soccer that. is a global game i wonder and what basketball is going to feel now this time around that's going to be very exciting but we're new to this we're new to being decent we're new to being good we're new to playing in these big tournaments yeah and just Having Canada in a game against Argentina at a major tournament was, was one of the more surreal experiences. Like they got the big flags in the field yeah. and they're doing the big like intro for yeah, the only America. time I'd ever seen that yeah. was when I played FIFA World Cup yeah. editions. And I was like, wow, that's like, Whoa, Canada's flag. real. <laughs> yeah. Not FIFA World Cup. <laughs> so no, it was very, very, very cool. No, it was cool. Yeah, except I guess, except for yeah, except days. for some of the Argentinian fans that were there that re- totally ruined it, and we'll talk about that in a sec. But I <laughs> gotta stay on this for just a second before we just. But I can't talk about it without that. Oh, of course like, not. It just clouds everything. 
No, we we were there, and again, the game was awesome. Mm-hmm. The staff was awesome. Mm-hmm. The atmosphere, for the most part, the Canadian fans, respectful and great as mm-hmm. always. Great. Yes, and there were just a few bad apple Argentinian fans mm-hmm. that I. How many how many games do you think I've been to? How many bars do you think I've been to in my life? Like I'm an old man yeah. now. I've been to thousands. Mm-hmm. Like I, my whole life has basically been from the legal drinking age to now has been me in bars and stadiums <laughs> watching games and sharing those spaces with other fans. The Argentinian fan that sat in front of us was yeah. the worst person I've ever witnessed at a sporting event or a sports bar in, in my entire life. I'm trying to go through the Rolodex. You, you know, and I went to that Yankees game yeah. together where there was the one guy. Yeah, it was tense with me and we got into it. Dude, I got in a fight. In Montreal, when I was in my early twenties, it was she's a, on the Mount Rushmore. Let's and just say that she's ahead of those guys <laughs> yeah. that punched me and my friends out. So I think to go back to us being new to this, yeah, like we we know hockey, where we've been around a million Habs fans in our life, we've been around a million Ottawa Senators fans yeah. in our lives, uh, Yankees, like you said, Red Sox. We've been around. Soccer brings out the worst in people. We've been around. But, Soccer but, but brings you, out but to, the exactly, worst in people. To your point yeah. about it feeling like 90 minutes of playoff hockey, yeah. the stakes are so high. Yeah. Having this woman there made it feel like it was the World Cup final. Yeah, it did. I have I've never, never yeah. had a higher stakes. Never wanted event. anything more in sports like, than just to the score. Goal. Yeah. I just the goal. And <laughs> I've never, like, she really ruined the night. Honestly, though. It's kind of good we didn't score because had we scored, it, yeah. it could have gotten yeah. bad. It, it could have gotten bad. bad. It yeah. would have gotten contentious. Four of words <laughs> would have gone through the roof. I just there's there's truly nothing worse, and and I I don't li- I'm not this person when I go to sporting events. Yeah. Maybe when I was again in my early twenties, going to like Leaf Sens games, talking a little trash because mm-hmm. going to Leaf Sens especially. You got, whoa, whoa. you know, you know that. Sorry, that was Tej getting the highlights. Yeah, you're like, like the text line. <laughs> <laughs> you want, sorry, was I saying something so boring that you just no. went to your laptop to watch Tej getting the highlights? <laughs> no, they were just on there from yesterday. My bad. You're like, hey, let me just pull yeah. these up yeah. real quick. Yeah. Let me watch Tej. Yeah. I there's nothing worse than being the loudmouth nonstop fan. Yeah, in the moments, opposing though. atmosphere that has no sense of humor mm-hmm. or ability to connect with the people around you. Shame, Though, as we call yeah, it. Yeah, that's it. It's like. If you're going to talk a little trash, it has to be done a little tongue in cheek with like a wry smile, you know, as soon as you start getting into the mode of really being rude and awful and bringing that tone to sports, you do, you ruin it for the people around you. And that, that's what sucked about that. But to kind of compare the soccer thing too, to even how I'm going to feel with the basketball, it's not because basketball game of runs, you basically are going to feel that in a tight game Mm -hmm. in the fourth quarter. Yeah. You got to wait for the fourth quarter to feel that kind of energy that kind of import and there is something about soccer the global game it's not just going to the olympics it really is going to be how you fare against the united states yeah that's you it. know they're the top yeah. soccer this is the united states of soccer mm-hmm. or at least one of them yeah. but then there's like eight united states of soccer mm-hmm. six united states of soccer mm-hmm. so to be playing argentina I, I i actually came away with this a little disappointed in the result in the moment because I wanted Canada to win and they had the, you know, it was nil nil at the half. But my major takeaway from this game is we should be so proud of where this country is at soccer wise. Oh, no question. We played Argentina and it wasn't embarrassing. Yeah. I mean, they had a few breakaways, but outside Dude, of that, of course, it was okay. <laughs> they did. And our, our goalie made yeah. some spectacular Maxime saves. Crapple. Crumble Crumble made some unreal yes. saves. There, there's a scenario in this game where Argentina does beat uh, Canada 4-1, yeah. 5-1, right? Mm-hmm. There's definitely that. So if you're looking at this game going, oh, your goalie made all these saves and all this, that was not an embarrassing result. Mm-hmm. Canada, uh, Canada, I thought, acquitted themselves very well. They had some good counterattacks, which is supposed to be the thing. Mm-hmm. I saw some people online doing the whole, oh, well, Canada didn't really control the play or get the yeah, middle no, of the field. Yeah, I'm like, well, no duh. yeah, they're Canada against <laughs> Argentina. <laughs> Like, what do you expect? Yeah, I, I just I, the the discalibration. Imagine, Je- imagine Jesse March is like, you know what we're gonna do against Argentina? Yeah, we're gonna try to have possession, control no the middle, attack, yeah, like, yeah, just have it the entire time, messy. kick it around. You could see, especially the discrepancy with the two teams, just uh, the first touch mm-hmm. and some of the passing. Yeah. Canada's passing in the midfield was a lot of butcher ball, mm-hmm. whereas Argentina is just like, oh, and there's another perfect pass like, to their foot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so bang, 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 yeah. beautiful, beautiful stuff. That didn't feel to me like the number one team on the planet versus the 49th team on the planet. And there being that much of a discrepancy where you went away from this going, 
man, we could, this, this program's never going to be anything, or this was a, an embarrassment. This was a debacle. This was awful. I was really proud of the group. I thought that they played really well. And if not, if Jonathan David could ever score a big goal and a big moment for Ken, he leads Lille in goals. Mm -hmm. I need to see the highlights. Yeah. I need to see proof that Jonathan David this actually is, scores goals. This is what's actually kind of fun now where we've got the, the history with these guys now with the run to the World Cup with these other big games that they've played in the actual World Cup uh, leading up to this tournament. The yeah, friendlies. we know the now, characters. Now it's like we're starting to build reputations with this guy. Yeah. And I want to love him. Yeah, he's a really great player in Europe for Canada. But he's got to start popping a few in the old onion bag for me Come to start on, like that one, that Schaffelberg who we both were so yeah, impressed with when he comes next, the, the, the maritime messy, he comes oh. on, changes the game and he floats a perfect pass into him. Like you can never, like a lot of people will complain with strikers. Oh, the service is no good. The service is no good. He had a couple on a platter, David, that he just didn't finish. And that one from Schaffelberg, if you're a world-class striker, you're playing for a little, you're playing in one of the best leagues in the world, you're playing for your country, that's got to hit the back of the net 10 times out of 10. That makes it a 1-1 game and you don't know what happened. So I love that I have these like fiery opinions mm -hmm. now about guys who play over in Europe or now are playing for Canada. It's like, he's just got to be better. He just does. Like, mm -hmm. we need you to score. You are one of the main guys. You're a very important guy for us. You gotta, you gotta bury. He and Estacio, the two guys, have yeah. real opportunities in the game. Two of your best three players. Yeah, Estacio just heads it right at right the Tendi. It's like just find a corner, man. Anyways, and then Tejon Buchanan Oof. had one of the all time. That's and the, and, literally and the what Argentina I would have looked like. She stood up and laughed at us, and I was like, yeah. "Oh my god!" <laughs> yeah, that was a low moment. I was like, "Oh my god!" Tejon Buchanan <laughs> panic like, kicks it, over. falls over, kicks it with his off leg, misses the net by, and she starts doing the like the nets over here <laughs> move. Like, that that was that was one of the the second goal that they scored. <laughs> mm -hmm. Actually, the two goals they scored and that were the lowest yeah. moments yes. of the of the game. No question. That Tejon kick. Okay. Tejon was this, one of the sweethearts, I would say, one of the big winners of the run and then yeah. the World Cup, right? Mm -hmm. Schaffelberg. Yeah. So I had no idea who he was going into this game. Mm -hmm. None. Had never heard of him before in my life. And McKee's talking about him. He's going, oh, Maritime Messi, Maritime Messi. <laughs> and I think this I is think, kind of... By the way, I don't know. I saw Josh Cloak do it in his article. I don't know if he's the one who came up with it or not, but I saw Maritime Messi, and I think it was like his from when he was a kid, I guess. That was his nickname. No, but, yeah, I was gonna, but it's an incredible nickname, Maritime Messi. I, I would imagine that is uh, from a, Kentville, Nova Scotia. Shout yeah. out that kid. The game felt like it was really tilting mm -hmm. for Argentina. They score the goal and all of a sudden they've got possession a ton and they're kind of just hemming Canada in. I don't mm -hmm. know what the top, the term is in soccer, but that's the hockey term is they're getting hemmed in. They're getting hemmed they're, in. They're getting hemmed in their zone yeah. here. This caved is, in a little bit. Yeah, they're getting <laughs> caved in. And it, it had the feeling of, this game is going to end up being four, nothing, yeah. five, nothing. Felt like they're going to just start like pumping our eyes shut in this soccer game. They're oh wait, you know, good, respectable first half for you guys. You made a couple of saves. You were right there. You had your chances, but you didn't score in Argentina and now mm -hmm. you're dead. It was like, yeah. uh, did you watch the Portugal game? No, I didn't. Their first one of the tournament. Yeah. I can't remember who they're playing. It was like uh, Czechia. Was it? Was that first game against Czechia? Yeah, might have been. Yeah. It was. It was against a almost at a European country. But was like, <laughs> yeah, it was the Euros. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was Czechia. Yeah, it was Czechia. Yeah. Okay, so Czechia scores the first goal, but then Portugal from that moment on woke up and went, yeah. "We're gonna have the ball the whole time yeah. now, and we're just gonna kick it around." And they scored a few minutes later, and anyway, they just dominated the possession for the rest of the game. I thought we were gonna have that. I thought it was gonna be a, a embarrassment time, right? Mm -hmm. And so maybe that's that's kind of shaping my view of what today was. And then that Schaffelberg kid comes in mm -hmm. and he's noticeable. Mm -hmm. You, when you watch the game, it's so obvious when Alfonso Davies says the ball and you go, Oh my God, this guy moves different. Oh wait, that's one of the he top players a, in the world. Like, breathtaking runner. It's beautiful runner. Yeah. Like the, uh, the balls are different. Everything is much, much, much better when Davies has it compared to the rest of his teammates. No question. Schaffelberg had, a little bit of yeah. the, a bit of the look. He did. He had a bit of the look. He did. He, dude. He gallops. Gallops. He, a couple of his crosses, gorgeous. Mm -hmm. He's the one that fed it into David. Yeah. He was awesome. And yeah. now I have, I, I've bought as much Schaffelberg stock as I can possibly and, buy. I mean, this for Jesse Marge is going to be one of his first big, de his first big decisions, right? Where Tejon I like him in this role, though. Tejon and him play the same sort of yeah. position, the same the, the same kind of thing. 
I mean, you have to start him in your next game against Peru. Schalberg has I, to start over Tejon and maybe do a reverse. Oh, see, I think it's. I think you keep doing that. Oh, so you just bring him on as like the super sub. You bring him on as the guy with know, fresh man. legs. I who's loved just, the way he looked. I dude, was so he was impressed. Unreal. With him. So you know, what, and the next heart- game is must win. I told you though, the heartbreaking thing is that TFC traded him I, for I, like, general allocation money. I want to talk about this? He was on, he was on loan from Nashville from Toronto to Nashville. Yep. And he was just on loan. It was when they brought in Signe and when they brought in Bernadeschi. And then they were like, yeah, okay, we're just, you can just keep them. It's like TFC, you let one of the bright, bright young stars yeah. of uh, Canada's men's national team go for literally, like, I don't know, 300K. Dude. It's absurd decision-making by TFC. So I've never been a TFC guy. I know. I, I've enjoyed the big moments. Mm-hmm. I've rooted for you're them. You're an Argos guy. Head. You're, I'm an Argos if guy. you're picking at your BMO field teams, you're Argos all, the day, all day. I get it. If you complain about the impact the Argos have on the field, you're talking to the wrong guy when you talk to me. Bark up the wrong tree. <laughs> Bark up the wrong Save tree. Save it. Yeah. <laughs> Let the big boys play yeah. on the turf. That's, this is a football stadium to me, not a soccer stadium. Okay? Uh, that's funny. If that kid was on TFC. For sure. Last night would have been a moment for me where I would have gone, I'm in. Mm-hmm. I would have been down there going, get me, get me a Schaffelberg. Get me a Schaffelberg jersey. Schaffel- get me a kit. You might be getting, I mean, Canada's new gear is unbelievable. You might have to get a Schaffelberg Canada tarp. Their whites or reds are both beautiful. So you might have to get one. They are really nice. The only thing you and I talked about yesterday is soccer jerseys always look great. Yeah. And then you put them on a (laughs) non-soccer player's body. Yeah. And they hug all the wrong yeah, places. About, Puma went through an era yeah. like 2016, 2017 <laughs> with the EPL. Where yeah. Arsenal, it's like Olivier Giroud is like, oh, yeah. Yeah, great. yeah you're not going to look so like good. that. And then like yeah. body eating bangers and mash every no. morning. It's not looking as hot in it. No, and that's my fear is I just, you get, you get the, especially if you get the red one. Yeah. Uh, you go, oh, wait, how did I? Just, just go a size up. Always go one size up with soccer jerseys. Yeah, definitely. You can't yeah. wear the tight one. But I will say, and you mentioned it a little bit about the next games in must win. The way we acquitted ourselves against Argentina, I think you have win. to be very, very excited and encouraged. Like Chile is no joke. Chile is like a true, you know, they're a South American power. They have a tradition. Yeah. They've had players like Arturo no, Vidal. Sid, Sid was on. He yeah, was going Sanchez, there. They're, 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 they're a good team. Because they're weirdly slotted yeah. below Peru. Yeah, but that's and not so, right. No, that, that was what Sid was so basically telling Peru, me. Peru, I mean, they're both, listen, they're South American sides. They're great teams. But we have a chance in both of those games. Well, the way we played against Argentina, we have skill, we have pace, we have guys. Well, we're supposed to have guys who can score. We're having a tough time at major tournaments. Dude, this is what's so frustrating is that you would think that that was the one thing that we could do. That and we that's could what do we did and the whole way through that run. Every game we were scoring big goals. We got these just baby defensive backs. Yeah. And you'd be thinking, oh, well, they're going to make huge mistakes and they're going to be a massive liability. Mm-hmm. And then they weren't. And you have your yeah, a couple breakaways, but again, sure. Mm-hmm. There were a couple of times where they get behind you. They're Argentina. Yeah. I expect that to happen a few times. <laughs> our in favorite, the game. Our favorite thing is like, hey, they're getting developed. They're getting developed. They, they they're, were getting hey, developed. They're getting developed. They getting developed <laughs> on the fly last night. <laughs> yeah. They were getting a lot of development in. <laughs> they were getting a lot of development in with yeah. Di Maria ripping down the right side all night long. I... I couldn't be happier with where it's at right now yeah. other than that one thing, which is, hey, if we're supposed to have world-class goal scoring, if that's supposed Gotta to be one that. of our greatest strengths, maybe when we get those opportunities, finish a couple of those opportunities. Mm-hmm. Be nice to have what? It's now two goals and mm-hmm. four. It's been, it's been a while. It's two goals and four major games, Copa and World Cup. Yeah, it's not good. No, it's need, not good. need more than two. Need more than two. Last Schaffelberg thought, though, from the TFC thing, 100% would have got me in it. Whoever made that decision, that to me is a, a crushing blow because anybody on earth, again, a, a soccer rube like me can tell you Davies is great. Mm-hmm. Uh, anybody can watch a soccer game and go, oh, wow, that guy really stands out. When someone is in your development system and you move off of a guy like that mm-hmm. who is Canadian yeah, it, it for matters. money. Yes, for money. That is that to me is one of your most important jobs is you are supposed to be different from me in terms of identifying what talent is I'm trying to and what is going to put that. butts in the seats. So to move off of that kid for nothing, I like <laughs> that's already, I, I'm so in soccer mode right now that, that I'm, I'm going, that's an all time sports. What if, what if TFC doesn't sell Schaffelberg for allocation money? He, here's He's spectacular, I, man. I, my, my final thought on Canada versus Argentina. I will never, ever root for Argentina. No, I hate Argentina. Ever again. I hate Argentina. And like, people they, go. But that's good, though. They created a true rival. Like, I understand it. And it's like, I hate it. I dude, will never root for them ever again. Dude, um, people will be like, well, did you feel that way against Belgium? No. no. 
I wasn't watching it with the most obnoxious. For sure, obnoxious. but I was also uh, like highly invested in this, right? I, we watched it with American soccer fans. We watched. We were in Hamilton, yeah, in a section with American fans. Yeah, I guess. we walked up to the game with American fans. We yeah. really wanted that game. We hated Pulisic. He was yeah. such a diver. Yeah. He's your boy. The, Lebr- the LeBron James of soccer. The LeBron James not of soccer. Anymore. He's, not on, he's not on Chelsea anymore. So it's all good. I don't. I don't think I hate these states as much as I hate Argentina now. Argentina, that one fan, oh, yeah. and her <laughs> fake boyfriend, <laughs> who kept trying to get involved. Another Argentinian guy. <laughs> the way they comported themselves. Yeah. I am the most Brazilian guy. <laughs> like, Brazil and Argentina ever play in a meaningful game? I'm going to get, like, <laughs> That's a, problem, a, a Brazil jersey. Because Brazil's been big-time chokers recently. I don't care. Yeah, they, I, I, I'm, I'm a Brazil guy. I'm a, my second favorite soccer team from this point forward is whoever <laughs> plays Argentina. Preach it, brother. I right hate there. them. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hate them. Agree. <laughs> this has ruined a lifetime of me and Argentinian. Yeah. And really, I, re- I always liked Argentina. I rooted so hard for them in the World Cup, dude. And I feel sick about it. I just devastated. <laughs> I wish I could take it back. All the things that I said about Argentina. Viva la no, I. The rest of my career, all I will ever do is. I'm like, remember when Sid made that video of Messi's a fraud? Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I he's overrated. <laughs> couldn't talk against. He couldn't us. score against Canada. No. He's like, yeah, I I hate Messi. I hate Di Maria. I hate all of Argentina. Can't stand their fans. Classless fans. I, no, no worse team on earth to me. <laughs> no worse team. Worst team on earth. Them and Montreal Canadiens, the two teams that I just do not accept that you cheer for. Okay. So yeah, thanks Argentina. <laughs> okay, so the Oilers play tonight. Mm-hmm. Can't wait. I know. Can't Hot, wait. This is as good as it gets. Yeah. This truly. is as good as it gets. Connor McDavid, truly, I think. I, I, okay, what do you actually think about this take? Because I was going to do Leafs first, but no, let's do yeah, yeah. Little Oilers. This actually feels like it could be the most important cup in my lifetime. Mm-hmm. Just given that McDavid's down three games in a series, mm-hmm. and now he's putting his team on his back. He could. He's already got one Gretzky record. He could easily grab two Gretzky records. He could have the most points ever in a playoff run. Being down three games to nothing... And then basically storming back and dominating, I think out of all the most memorable cups that I will ever have, yeah. most memorable performances, given who he is in the game, where he's at in his career, where this series was at, how much respect I have for the Panthers, the guy whose record he's breaking, this might be the most impressive Stanley Cup yeah. if he's able to win it. I think there's definitely a conversation for this being the biggest accomplishment in the history of the game if he comes back and does it. Like it's just because it's all how, him. Wh- what's the yeah? What's the case against you? Go down 0-3, yeah. and he has eight points in the in game four and game five combined. It's just it's otherworldly stuff. You know, Kipper said it best a couple of days ago that everyone seems to be getting slower, and he's yeah, just getting he, faster. Dude, I thought the same thing in that uh, that last game. I went, he looks fresh. Yeah. They, he looks like they but just. But that's a credit. Like people, you know, he's always in the gym. He's a mutant, mm-hmm. and people have gotten on him for being so driven and so like how he doesn't care about anything else. And he's in the gym so much. And he had that injury early in the year, and people were wondering, like, you know, you got to take a couple days off here and there. It was like a like a tweak or whatever. No, but this is why you do it because you get to this point, and he's clearly got all the God given talent in the world. No question, he's touched. You know, he's the Messi of hockey. He's yeah, touched. but he plays so hard. But the thing is, it's. The commitment to the game yep. and the dog in him and the just like the killer instinct. Yep. You just can't teach that. Man, th- this is this is gonna be a, a comparison that pisses people off, but I once heard we'll never see Michael Jordan again mm-hmm. because we're never gonna get the greatest athlete on earth, the most talented guy mm-hmm. in the number one competitor's brain. With yeah. the number one competitor brain, all those things combined. I think the reason that people gravitate so much to Kobe Bryant is a very similar thing where you go like, this is not just the best of the best. Mm -hmm. This is not just one of the greatest players ever. He cares the most. He cares more than everybody else. And that's what you want from your athletes, right? Him and McKinnon are like the two, like one and two competitive But that's what I'm saying is he's the, I think McDavid is the top dog for caring and playing hard and never like taking shifts off. He cheats every once in a while. Like, you know, he's also the sickest guy in the league. He gets to do it. But that's it. He plays hard and he's nasty. And he's just, he's at the podium going, Hey, I I want you to doubt us again. Oh, we're going to drag him back to Alberta. Like, and the beard right now. That's it. No, he just looks amazing. It's, it's Michael Jordan esque right now. What he's doing which is that best athlete on the planet or at least best hockey player athlete on the yeah. planet 
with number one competitor. And what a just d- delight, what a treat to watch him. Yeah. And that's the one thing I'll say to Leaf fans right now that are rooting against Edmonton. I get it because the closer they get to this, the more I'm like, holy crap, this would be an all time win for Edmonton. And this is like the Canadian thing. Mm-hmm. It's hard not to root for him. Well, it's hard not to just go. I respect you so much that yeah. like, I'm certainly not going to be heartbroken about an Edmonton Stanley cup. I've already said, I think the Alberta teams are straight up different to me in terms of the way I perceive the other Canadian teams. Like if Vancouver was going to win or Montreal was going to win, I wouldn't care if they had the best player on earth. Mm-hmm. There is something a little bit different about Edmonton and I'll throw Winnipeg in there too in Calgary, but man, oh man, oh man, he is just, the, I, I, I can't, I've never seen anything like this. This is what it must fe- have felt like to watch Bobby Orr. Like when you're like, oh, whoa, what the hell is this? That's how I feel watching him play in playoff games. So I said yesterday, and I'll do it a little bit again here, that I have been rooting against them the whole way through. And because I think they're Canada's best chance here, obviously. Probably you've been texting me. But no, I've been rooting against them. I have been. Like I, I, You literally were texting me the other night being like, I'm heartbroken. The Oilers no, lost. No, no, I'm back. And, listen, I'm back. I don't love the Oilers. Yeah, you're like, I'm, I'm back Oiler. and forth because... Yeah. As a Leaf fan, mm-hmm. as a guy who no, has, I get it. I'm, has, I'm the same way. I has got... always said that the only way I want the cup back in sure. Canada is down Young Street. Like, yeah. there's no way I want another team to have this. But there reaches a certain point where you just have to be able to say you witnessed something like this. Yeah, that's it. Is he, dude, he's he has entered this Sid like, territory. This where is 23 I just... Tom Brady comeback. Yeah. This is LeBron against the Warriors comeback. This is like Red Sox coming back on the Yankees three yeah. zero. Like. This is an all time moment that we're witnessing here. And it's one singular guy who's orchestrating it. Like there's been other contributions, Connor Brown getting the shorty Skinner, making some big saves. Like their bottom six has been contributing more shorties in a row. He's been, they've been great. There's been other guys who contributing, but the main guy who's stirring the drink and the play he makes on the Corey Perry one and Sportsnet put it a video with like this piano music under it and him going slow motion. It's it's poetry in motion. It's the most beautiful thing you'll ever see. I love yeah, Connor McDavid. Splitting those guys. I like that's how much I love this guy. Is that I'm willing yeah. to put aside my extreme no, biases where I don't want another Canadian team to win it. This man deserves it. Give him, crown him, crown him. Let him have it. It's time. It's time. And if they don't even, he's going to get the con Smythe. He's going to get no matter what happens tonight. He's getting the con Smythe. Yeah. He's going to throw it into the crowd like Elias, Elias Pettersson did with his silver medal at the World Juniors. Everyone killed him. He's just going to throw the consmite into the crowd. He's not going to want it. He's like That's a tough one to, you know, to lose. But I don't know, man. I just... I, I re- think he would... That's his actual nightmare. Yeah, for sure. He does, he does not want, want to win no. the consmite. No. I'm, I'm like, if you're a voter mm-hmm. and you actually care about Connor McDavid don't vote and they him. lose this vote game for or they lose the next one, <laughs> yeah. do not vote for him. <laughs> I know. The anger that will be in that man's eyes... Yeah. Accepting and that him, award. him doing the media afterwards, like, what's it mean to you? And he's gonna nothing. be like, I don't care. Yeah, I don't nothing. care. I don't care. I yeah. don't care. And, and he'll mean it. Yeah. That guy will mean it in the, yeah. Don't let him, uh, RIP Jerry West. Don't let him become yeah, Jerry West. Honestly. Don't let this be a thing. So the last thing I'll say quickly here on McDavid. Are you a vote for the losing guy though? No. I'm, I'm a generally the never t- give it to a losing guy, I, but well, this is there's the- only two. There's only two instances where I ever thought it should have gone to the losing team. Mm-hmm. And one of them had happened with Jay Shiger because I've never seen a better performance from a singular player. Honestly, a I thought LeBron could have got it. And that and, was the other one. Yeah. That's the one where it didn't get it. When Iguodala got it. Yeah. Where he's like, he that's got, the worst. He guarded oh. him. He's like, didn't he yeah. have 35, yeah. 10 and 10? No. Like, <laughs> yeah. There's a couple, there's a few things that history would like to have back yes, when it comes one. to Super Bowl MVPs or any of those. That might be number one on the list. Yeah. That is really, absurd. That's got to be Andre Iguodala being finals MVP. Yeah. Looking back on it. Is guarded him so well. Insane. Triple double average. Insane um, that that one ended up having. The McDavid thing. Uh, this is something that uh, Jason Greger brought up on our show the other day, and I didn't really – that he's got a really good shot to get to 2,000 points as the second guy ever to get to 2,000 points. Yeah. I, it's something I hadn't considered, but he's almost at 1,000 in 620 yeah. games. Oh, dude, again. It's, he's, he's on track to truly be like close to the GOAT, one of the best of all time. And it's – he needs to get his cup. He needs to get one cup. And it's like I think it's different. When you say like guys have multiple cups in different eras, mm-hmm. right? Where you look back in those Oilers cups and it's like they have five cups or six cups or whatever. But I think one is probably equivalent to like one and a half or two cups back then. One now because the league's so deep, it's so mm-hmm. competitive. 
he needs to get this one because you never know how close you're going to get again. It's that's just, what, that's why I'm saying this is the most it. meaningful cup. You have to get this This one. is why I look at it and go, you, you, this would be number one. The fact that you're in a Canadian market with all the pressure yes. in the world. You're the number one player on the planet with all the pressure yeah. in the world. You're down but three games. We talked about pressure yesterday. Break he the doesn't Gretzky feel record. It. He doesn't yeah. feel He levitates above but, it. He's but too it. good. But then also to be um, in the salary cap era where you've got – Five plus million tied into yeah. a goaltender that's not even on the bench and mm-hmm. a defenseman that's making nine and a half sheets that <laughs> and Connor is a Brown's minus contract 100. that's making it's crazy. The fact that you're able to just go, yep, who cares? And also, and again, because this is a you know Leafs, we're in Toronto. Yeah. Another reminder of when you cry, when you cry about, oh well, this guy's making a million oh, too yeah. much, and this guy's doing that, and that's why Marner and Matthews can't win is because Tavares makes. Fu- yeah, okay. Yeah. Is Tavares is Tavares making five and a half million dollars too much? No. Like probably three. Sure. Three tops. Just saying. Get you a Connor Brown. Five and a half mil for their goalie who doesn't play. Mm-hmm. Who's off the date. They, they literally have the, the handicap where it's like, hey, we gave you a handicap of yeah. minus five and a half mil off the cap. <laughs> well, no. Because you get Connor McDavid. Well, the, he would have gone down. So he, they would get a bit of relief. I think yeah, it's sure. Like whatever it is. It's yeah, just like, it's, hey. I know the conversation. Yeah. Yeah. You're with the scratch golfer. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> Honestly, that's it. You got to have the handicap. Yeah. And he's like, don't worry, I'll still be in yeah, the cup. They're giving down. strokes. Yeah, exactly. They're giving strokes. That's they're in game saying. six. Yeah, it's just it's like, crazy. Oh, it doesn't matter. Okay, leaves. Crazy. Um, I actually think that this run with the Oilers has been even more of a wake-up call of what the Leafs don't have and even more of an argument to not bring it back because they, they just don't have this. They don't have the juice of a McDavid. It's kind of... Uh, again, Matthews was hurt and he had his awesome game too. And I do think that he's going to be able to find it's such an embarrassing thing to say. I know, but I'm just saying, You're right. I'm just <laughs> saying that it's crazy. He had the game two in the first round for sure. But I'm just saying at least it was a real sign of encouragement yeah. before he did get injured. So I'm giving him the, the caveats, yes, but good. I don't know how you could have a pulse and watch the Leafs these past eight years and go, Oh, well they've got some of this juice. Like, no, they don't have that extra it factor of the McDavid of, Mm -hmm. Oh, I can't wait for you to doubt me again. When the Leafs get doubted, they're like, I can't believe you doubted us again. The media mentioned it. The players and the fans, they hate us. The the puck didn't go in. We had some good looks. We had bounces. It's like, they're a a loser mentality squad. And the core four has been built on this and we've known it for quite some time. And the more I watch the Oilers, the more I'm like, becoming almost apathetic about the potential for this to roll over and watch the core four again mm. yeah, for am. another regular season. Like I, th- again, I think that this is somehow making it worse that the Oilers are doing this. And yet we're a couple weeks away now from free agency. We're a week away from the draft. The drafts next Friday. Yeah. They're actually having the draft in the third period of game seven. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I actually, so, I, I love, so late. Yeah, but I love the condensed schedule. I love how it just like, it was like bang, bang, oh, yeah, bang. No, no, but, but like, yeah, but that should have happened like a month ago. Sure. <laughs> how are you? Like, what is your level of optimism right now that something's going to change? Because I, I, I saw Kipper's report where they're like, "Whoa, Leafs might like Jake DeBrusque," and I went, "This is the capital of the others, right?" Because you and I yeah. always talk about the the outside of the core. What are they sticking on and going on and? Ooh, it's a big guy who is a good transition yeah. player, and that's what the Leafs need. And you go, no, what the Leafs need is not the same four guys to be coming back and <laughs> playing for this team again. I, I really want to say that I want. I just have no idea. I, I really don't know which way they're going to go because the smoke screens are out, bud. Yeah, like uh, we're seeing the extent. Like I saw, no, but the Biz Marner talk- Camp stuff is yeah. real. But I know. But I saw the that the tweet. That, well, Biz saying that they're looking at an extension, you know, yeah. Dragger's talking about an extension. They're talking about trades. They're talking about, I don't, I don't know what to believe. And I can't really believe that Brad for living is thinking about extending Mitch Marner in this market because sure. You can have the conversations about knocking on the door a million times. And one of these times you finally break through, but they've just never shown any ability to do it outside of one year where they made it to the second round and won one game in the second round. Like, He's the obvious one to trade. Obviously, we've been talking about it forever, but I, I just I can't believe that they would come back with him. Or the the other scenario is bring him back, not sign him, and then let him walk to no, UFA. No. That's a franchise ruiner. You Dude. can't do that. You can't let him go for nothing. They're in a really tough spot with him. I don't really know how this is going to play out. I like, want I, the usually, extension. You want the extension. Here's why. You got to give him the extension 
but you can't give him any no move. Okay, well, he's not going to do it. Well, then... End of story. Well, okay, well, then that's the way it is. But you that is the crucial point for tree living and the hardball. And if you're Mitch Marner, too, mm. that's actually a way for the fans to not despise you. Because I, I do think that it's very much like... We get a little too granular with it at times where we, we're we online and we live in media mm-hmm. and we think about the way Marner's perceived. And ultimately, yeah. this is a multimillionaire who's spending his time golfing and in Muskoka and yeah. traveling around. He's with his close family and friends. And when he's at the game and he's at the arena and he scores a goal, the fans still cheer. They're not going to boo him. Yeah. When he goes to the, what do they do, the youth night? Yeah. All Most of the kids are still wearing Marner jerseys, right? I don't think he's going to feel it. He might feel it more than some other guys because I think he and his camp are more well, online. They seek and, it out. Yeah, they exactly. They're they're always looking for it. Like I said, they'll be listening to this right now. Like Absolutely. there's just no doubt about it. They listen to every single thing. They're they're taking it all in. There's somebody within the group that clocks it all. That is basically keeping com- receipts. They they keep all the receipts. If I'm him, that's what I would go for. Is okay, so I can get the most money here, right? Because that extension, you can still get the most mm-hmm. uh, the most years. So you're still given that extra year, but your one capitulation, if your Mitch is going, hey man, we know you can't take like a massive haircut on the money. We know you're going to get the William Nylander contract essentially. Like mm-hmm. that's going to happen. So why not get that here? Why not get financially secured? Why not get the opportunity to rehabilitate your image here in Toronto and play out that one year? And then if it doesn't work again, we're going to hold the cards in terms of what your future might be. That's to me the, at this point, the mm-hmm. best case scenario, because I just... The pie in the sky stuff about trading him to Vegas mm-hmm. just doesn't sit right with me. There's two reasons. One, it just feels so much like, well, Vegas is the natural suitor for anybody that's like a depreciated asset. They're, and the, they're, they're, they're the, 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 the depressed asset yeah, the, killers where they find him and they turn out to be studs. They're like the Lakers in terms of trade rumors where everyone's always rumored to go to the Lakers. Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh, Lakers are going to trade for this guy. Lakers are going to trade for every single player who ever played. Vegas is now kind of becoming that for hockey. So I do wonder if it's a little bit of that mm-hmm. and a little bit of that team being like, no, 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 we would actually do this. Of course we would try to turn a couple of uh, pending free agent defensemen into Mitch Marner on an extension. And of course this is going to work out for us. But even when I see those Marner trades, mm-hmm. I look at some of them and I go, all right, she, they don't, like good player, good defenseman getting a pending UFA D man who is it's you're, you're still losing that Marner trade yeah, and doing it under the gun, doing it with him having all the control. It's just hard for me to imagine the Leafs doing it. And I don't want to see Mitch Marner play for the Toronto Maple Leafs anymore. I think that he's gotten a bit of a raw deal in terms of he takes more heat than any other Leaf. It's because he's the last guy to sign the contract. It's because his last contract was so aggressively bad in the way that their camp handled it and all of it. Like there's a million reasons to be upset with Marner, but I do know that it's my dumb sports fan brain that is going like, just make the trade, just make the trade, well, just make the so trade. You've, you've had the sober second thought. So because we've had these conversations multiple times where you've been like, I don't care if they lose the trade. I don't care. If but they I'm, lose the cause trade. I've they always to, thought they were they have lose to the look, trade. they have to look different. The thing that this is the thing about losing the trade that has always bothered me. I can't stand the framework of, well, you're going to lose the trade. So get, okay. Yeah. Like there's other ways to win it, which is the goal is not to just lose the trade and then be a worse hockey team mm-hmm. and then never get to where well, you the are. The cap space that you would get from one of these trades course, is a massive asset that's where you it. could move something else out. That's, that's it is try to get creative. And I do think that there is a loser mentality in that room. They always talk about how great it is and how, um, they love each other and that they believe in one another. But ultimately I think that you, it's, it's the same thing where you've experienced the same thing over and over and over again. Mm-hmm. You start to expect that you start to manifest it. And, and I don't think that these guys have that dog in them. I don't think that they have that gear to kick in and go this time. It's going to be different. They've been given that in ample opportunity over and over and over again. And they've gotten through one playoff round. It's just, it's, I've seen enough. One of the things that really jumped out to me, and I know it's Ryan Reeves. I know it's like a a free agent signing last year, but in his first like a zoom availability, I remember he's sitting on his patio and he was talking and he said, I've heard it's a quiet room. Yeah. I've heard it's a quiet room is honestly that you might as well. That's the most offensive thing you could say about any hockey locker room is I've heard it's a quiet room. And that tells you a lot about the way it is. And I know Ryan Reeves, the kind of guy he is, but like there's a perception people talk. I, the extension thing, I, I think I like the premise of what you're saying in terms of 
playing out next year on your the original contract and then having your next one kick in with the no with the no no movement clause. I think that idea is great. And but I, there has to be a little but incentive. But there's from, just no cha- Why but not? David because- Camp got a no move clause. Like there's just no way that Mitch Marner's camp, Darren Ferris, everybody involved, if they're yeah. signing an extension in Toronto, they're going to want the guarantee of controlling where they went. Yeah, but every that's single it. person. You give them the limited no move clause. That's the capitulation. Every single that you guy make. that's ever signed a contract yeah. here has gotten their cake and eaten it too. And I don't see the number one cake and eat it too guy ever signing a contract that doesn't have a no move clause on because it, even the, if it's limited. Because the number one cake and eat it too guy does understand the way the market feels about him. For sure. And has to understand that if he extends in Toronto, Mitch Marner, no full no move, 11 sheets a year. No, it's, it's eight years. The vitriol is going to be brutal. He'll he'll probably be, I'm trying to think about like the least popular athletes that have ever been in this city. He's going to be one of them amongst a certain group of people. Mm-hmm. He is just always going to have the the target on his back the rest of his career here. And And let's be honest. I think that he's proven that he is not the kind of guy that deals well with added pressure. He's not McDavid. No. He's not like, sure, bring it on, world, and then he'll just take care of business. He is the type of guy, which is so weird about his his group's lack of desire to go try somewhere else too, because you would think, hey, man, ultimately, it's one thing for the people around you to be saying something, but for you personally, like, wouldn't you love to go play in Los Angeles and be on the beach and have a... Playing in Toronto's... Probably pretty sick, you know? Yeah, but I'm just saying it's that. It's where he's from. It's where, like, but you don't you want to be really liked? Like, don't you want to go somewhere and have people root you on and I, have them really care about you and not have to deal with this, have to deal with you and I, I breaking know. down the, this? Anyway. I know what, I know if it was me, I'd want to get, want to get the hell out of here. But these guys are, you know, they're uber competitive. They're, they want to prove people wrong. No, that's that's a huge it. I part think of it. You're right. I think that's too much of like, we'll show you. And that's then, what it is. And but then, then that, they're like, but they go, we'll show you. And then they never do. And then it's like, the, here's yeah, nothing. Here's nothing. <laughs> and then they're like, well, it was your fault, media and fans. Yeah. Like you put too much. And yeah. we had our chances. And, oh, that's the narratives that you guys want to craft about our but room. But we know different. I do think that if there's a world, mm-hmm. which its world does not exist, that if he signs a somewhat... No. Somewhat team-friendly contract. No, because he'd have to take less than what he's making now. No, if he took exactly what he's making now or a little bit more and had a didn't have a no-move hey, clause. I'll tell you this right never now. Never happening. I do not want him at what he's making now. Yeah, I think that's... I think On with the cap, even the cap, the cap going, going up. up. No, that's that's not right. He, uh, he's, even he's with fine. the cap going he's a up. Like, he's a ugh. close to 100-point winger who plays Selkie-level defense. Yep, kills in the regular penalties, season. For sure, but you still got to get to the playoffs. Dude, he's he an $11 million the, player. He, he is. is the consummate regular season player. He is... Could not be any different than Johnny Goudreau. Mm-hmm. Same thing. No, that's wrong. He's better same than Johnny Goudreau. No, I'm just saying that Johnny Goudreau had the same stuff where it was like, oh, man, this guy's lights out. You got to mm-hmm. pay this guy. Can't lose this guy in a trade. You watched him in the playoffs yeah. when he was up against McDavid in a big moment. You went, where is he? Mm-hmm. What what line is he on? What number does he wear? And I feel the same way with Mitch Marner. Even this playoffs, there was nothing more Mitch Marner than having his spectacular goal when all they're the pressure was there. off and they're down and the game is essentially over. And he's yeah. like, look at this, highlight reel. And How about like, through the legs, backhand on one knee? Sick, man. That was a sick goal. Though. Yeah, Holy. great. Probably the nicest goal of his career. Do it when it's one nothing. I know. Like, do what Connor Brown has done. I know. <laughs> you know, like, go I, so do that. Ultimately, like, at the end of the day here, we're it's training camp. It's September. We're starting up. Is he a Toronto Maple Leaf? Yeah. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. I think so too. Here's, here's who I think are Toronto Maple Leafs to start training camp. All of them. Yeah. <laughs> and welcome. Everyone. And, and, and get ready to learn. Jake DeBrusque is bringing a new. Uh, yeah. Jake DeBrusque, having been on the Bruins, knows what kind of an element. It's like, wait, leaf didn't killer, you get that with Bertuzzi? Leaf killer comes here. Yeah, and hey. Says he kill anyone. And I actually like DeBrusque. Me too. Like, I really I, yeah. do think that would be a good signing for this team. Me too. I'm, I'm very not opposed to it. It's just, like, this is the same thing. Bertuzzi, uh, <laughs> DeBrusque, I don't care. Bunting, all of the guys that are around the it core. Doesn't matter. It's they, not we, going to drive the brus. How many times can you do it? Nine times? Yeah, Where you paper new guys to the core and have it work well, and not work? It's just. And then there's this thing too, which is, and, and I, I actually said this ahead of the Nylander thing, which mm-hmm. is eventually they're, they're going to go into this season and then Tavares is going to be in a UFA. And they're probably going to play real hardball with him because he's going to have far less options. And he does have a young family yeah, here. Yeah. He wanted to be here. And if you're talking about like actual legacy rehabilitation stuff for Tavares, 
I think for him, especially as he gets later in his career wanting to win, he will have a bunch of competing interests that will work well for the Toronto Maple Leafs, which is, hey, dude, um, you can still make millions of dollars. You're already rich. You can stay here planted in Toronto, and people are going to love you for taking a huge haircut, much like the other guys that have done it, the Spetses, the Giordanos. Of course, he's different because he's going to be more valuable than them hitting free agency. But if you recall, Gio left a couple million dollars a year on the table yeah. when he did it. And I think he was, no, it was Spezza that had the quote of, if I could have taken less, I would have. Mm, right? Or yeah. was it Giordano? It was one of those two guys. He was actually like, actually, I just, I would take it less just so I can be with Kyle Dubas. That's all I care yeah. about. Yeah. Kyle Dubas' yeah. best friend. He's an intern actually in <laughs> Pittsburgh. He's an unpaid. <laughs> it's just like, oh, Kyle, you're the I love you, best. Kyle. You're the coolest guy. I, I actually, when that happened, I was yeah, like, I please get the men in black stick so I can yeah. never, be, uh, ne- I don't want to have the memories of me liking Jason Spezza. I don't even want to. <laughs> I, I just reminded me that I had probably have a million I love Spetsa tweets well, out there. I'm going like, to go delete them. <laughs> yeah, I'm go. doing that right now. <laughs> <laughs> I think I have like a Spetsa Leafs Road tweet, I'm sure. Oh, like it's yeah. anyway, um yeah, I, I think that you're gonna have this whole idea of well, don't worry, Tavares is gonna be off the books next year and you're gonna save so much money because you're gonna bring him back at five million dollars less. Mm-hmm. And then you just feel like what? It's a punt season. It's a get to Tavares' end of his contract season. Well, that's a part. A part of yeah. I mean, it's just gonna be the same thing. A part of it that you know, trading Marner to have different cap space and then having Tavares off the books the following season. That's another really scary outcome too. Oh, by the way, I'm just googling. I'm just looking at your tweets with Spetsa. Don't read them. Oof. You gotta. Get I love de- them. You gotta get to delete and pal. buddy. I love them. Delete. He was <laughs> awesome for us. I mean, I mean he was honestly and the only one who cared. Can I tell you something too, though? <laughs> yeah. As as a guy who lived in Ottawa during the peak of the rivalry, mm-hmm. it was also so nice to try to be like, he's our favorite player to Sens fans. <laughs> that so was some fun. of those tweets. He never loved yeah. being a Sen like yeah, he loved being a That's what elite. I'm saying. Yes. So some of those tweets are done with the direct purpose of triggering Sens fans. Yeah. Uh, hold on. We're going to take a quick break. Subscribe to the podcast. Leave five stars. 